Greetings, family. I was just sitting here spending some time in the Word, reading out of the Passion Translation. It's just so rich with love, drips with mercy. <laughs> the language used in the Passion Translation is, like I said, it's just so rich. Father, we just want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you for your ongoing mercy and your kindness towards us. We want to thank you that you're still a friend to sinners, that you're the high and lofty one that stoops down to the lowly and communes with us. You're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's nothing impossible for you we just want to thank you we want to praise you we just want to lift your holy name because you're so good to us you're good to us even when life isn't good and we just want to thank you for that in Jesus name amen okay so I was reading Psalms 24 and I just felt like it's a just hit me so powerfully because of everything that's going on. We need to make sure that we stay prayed up here in the United States with our open borders and the plans and schemes of the enemy. And how many of you know that a lot of the plans and the schemes of the enemy fail because of the prayers of the saints? And how many of you understand that we're saints because we're washed clean in the blood of Jesus, not because we're good? He changes us from the inside out. He does that. It's very much a supernatural event. I say it in almost all my videos because we, want to, we never want to for, take out the supernatural aspect when we talk about God. Because if you remove the supernatural, all you have is religion. And that is just a set of rules that nobody wants to or can keep is pretty much what it boils down to. God's kindness is supernatural. It's what leads us to repentance, according to Romans 2.4. It's not a license to sin. It's it's a love that is so powerful it makes us not want to sin anymore <laughs> very much supernatural but anyway I'm going to read the 24th Psalm out of the Passion Translation it was written by David it's called David's Poetic Praise to God God claims the world as his okay let's just stop right there <laughs> We've been invited into God's story. We're, we're not trying to decide whether or not we want him into ours, which that's actually what we do, because he loves us so much. He'll give us, a, he gives us a free will. Because if we don't, with our free will, choose to love him back, what kind of love is that? He's not gonna force us to love him. He's gonna love us so thoroughly that we can't help but love him. But some people just don't really know how to get started. So let's just start with that prayer. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, I've heard so much about you through my lifetime. I don't even know if you're real or not. But in the event that you are, I want you to know that I want to have a relationship with you. I want to have a relationship with you starting right here, right now knowing that it's something that I cannot see with my eyes. Not in the beginning, anyway. I invite you into my heart, Jesus. I repent. Thank you for dying for my sins. Please show me how to live a life that's pleasing to you. I want to honor you all the days of my life because this world is yours. You've invited, you created me, invited me into your story. So show me where I fit, Lord. Show me where you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Psalm 24. 
God claims the world is his. Everything and everyone belongs to him. He's the one who pushed back the oceans to let the dry ground appear. Planting firm foundations for the earth. Who then ascends into the presence of the Lord? And who has the privilege of entering into God's holy place? Those who are clean, whose works and ways are pure, whose hearts are true and sealed by the truth. Those who never deceive, whose words are sure. They will receive the Lord's blessing and righteousness given by the Savior God. They will stand before God, for they seek the pleasure of God's face, the God of Jacob. It tells us to pause and to think about that. So wake up, you living gateways. We're a gateway for the King of glory. So wake up, you living gateways. Lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command the ageless doors of destiny over my life to open up. That's how you turn a scripture into a prayer. Welcome the King of Glory, for he is about to come through you. See, we're gateways for God to come through, right? He's living through us. You ask, who is the King of Glory? The Lord armed and ready for battle. He's armed and ready for battle. We just want to thank you, Lord, that you are armed and ready for, for battle for this nation, God. Whatever you're praying, Jesus, to the Father, we're in agreement over our region. We trust you. We walk by faith and not by sight. We ask that the people that are crossing our borders, that if they're not filled with righteousness on their way in, that you touch them as they come in. And we will just expand your heavenly kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, where was I? <laughs> you ask who is the who is the king who is the glory king? The Lord armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, invincible in every way. Every way. And to think he puts places so much value on us. That's a mind blower. So wake up, you living gateways, and rejoice. Fling wide, you ageless doors of destiny. Here he comes. The king of glory is ready to come in. You ask, who is the king of glory? He is the Lord of victory, armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, the invincible commander of heaven's hosts. Yes, he is the king of glory. That's the 24th Psalm in the Passion Translation. An unseen realm, very much active around us that we cannot see. And sometimes we can. God has always had a remnant on the earth that he shows spiritual things to. His presence is so strong right now. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water for repentance. The one that comes after me, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to tie, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's what a lot of the church is missing. I know several people that it's, including myself, in isolation, not 100%, but a good part of our time. With the little nobodies that you see on YouTube. <laughs> but 
a hundred followers. There comes a time when God reveals so much of himself to us that the things of this world just kind of, there's no appetite for it anymore. Because we, we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, the spiritual things. Our gifts and callings are irrevocable once God makes up his mind what your gifting is, he's not going to take it back. We just choose whether or not we use it. We just want to thank you, Lord, for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire for anybody that happens across this video and opens their heart to receive that. Mark 16, 17, 18 says we are followed by signs and wonders. You speak in new tongues. Raise the dead, cast out demons, heal the sick. You haven't changed. Those gifts have not ceased. And it's faith that activates them. Father, I also release a new levels of faith for what's coming our way in the future. In this next year, we want to be ready. Unshakable. We become unshakable, God, because you have loved, perfect love casts out all fear. You've loved us so well. We trust you so much. We're giving you a fresh yes today, God. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.